Throughout the MonsterVerse television series, Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, sequences from the Titan Monitoring Agency's origins in the 1950s are revealed in multiple prolonged flashback sequences. These scenes focus on scientists Bill Randa and Keiko Miura, joined by U.S. Army officer Lee Shaw, as they investigate Titan activity around the globe, including the earliest recorded sightings of the reptilian kaiju Godzilla. With Bill, played by Anders Holm, and Keiko, played by Mari Yamamoto, these flashbacks significantly fill out the backstory behind the monsterverse while revolving around a doomed love affair amid the international intrigue of documenting these epic monsters. In an exclusive interview with CBR, Monarch, Legacy of Monsters stars Anders Holm and Mari Yamamoto shared how they prepared for their performances for the Apple TV Plus original series, reflected on forming their tight dynamic with co-star Wyatt Russell, and explained the enduring appeal of Godzilla. CBR, Anders, to prepare for this role, did you study Kong, Skull Island and what John Goodman was doing, or did you figure that was a guy at a much different time of his life and start fresh? Anders home, it was a little bit of going to start fresh, but that was just because I'm not going to compete with John Goodman. I'm not going to do what he does. The dude's a national treasure. I just brought what I bring to the character, had some fun, tried to keep things light, and tried to hit those dramatic beats when it was dramatic. Mari, my favorite scene of yours is the Castle Bravo test, with the American military bombing Godzilla. There's a lot to unpack, with the American military destroying a Japanese icon. Walk me through that scene because we really see an emotional side to Keiko. Mari Yamamoto, we don't really talk about it in the show, about where Keiko came from, but the writers and I have talked about it. I also thought a lot about where she came from and what her experience with the war was. That is Keiko's origin story, the experience of the war. I would say, for all the Japanese people who were alive at the time, that becomes your foundation of how you live your life. She's an extreme of that because she's tracking radiation and studying the impact of radiation, which wasn't even a field at the time and later became a field, radioecology, in the 70s or 80s. She wasn't alive to see that, and it's really sad. That's what she was trying to do because she saw the devastation of it, and, like anybody, who, saw it, thought, never again. That's where the drive comes from for her. On that journey, she encounters these titans and is fascinated by them, and her passion and curiosity turn towards them. On that path, she's suddenly faced with this object that is the subject of her traumas and losses. I kind of get emotional thinking about it. Laughs. I think, as a Japanese actor, to get to embody that pain in such a dramatic moment, there are no words or dialogue. There are just a few lines of screaming. In that condensed moment, being able to pour that pain into it was a big responsibility and also a privilege as a Japanese actor. Yamamoto, for the Laden scene, we were on this gimbal set for maybe three days and were seasick. We felt like we were floating for days after. Home, when you're on a gimbal and the set's moving, you don't have to do as much acting as you think. You go in there and are like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then the room starts shaking, and you go, oh, this is totally different. But super fun. Home, it was great. I'm starting to call us a throuple. Why it was fun. I had never met him, and I had never met Mari either, but we hit it off and had a good time. It made filming easier. Yamamoto, yeah, it was kind of surprising because none of us had been in the same room until the day before the first shoot. It was just easy, and Wyatt is so relaxed. It's nice to be around him and feel that relaxation. He's very chill. Laughs. Home, he's hot. He's got style. He's got swagger. It's undeniable. I just think he's such an unbelievable character. He's larger than life. You can't avoid him. Whatever problem you have going on in your life, it pales in comparison to if Godzilla came to your city. You just have to give yourself to something of that magnitude. Yamamoto, I agree, and I think it means different things for different people, and that's why it has such a wide appeal. One of my friends, who is a gothic literature professor, was saying that humans have this fear of something that they birthed growing out of control and not being able to control it, like Frankenstein.